back to our 83rd episode of the Launcher Farm Show, where I interview Melinda Cruci DePerno with Keller Williams in San Diego. In this episode, Melinda and I talk about why relationship skills trump sales skills all day. Melinda also shares how she shifted from old school networking to focusing on building relationships by being intentional with her follow-up. We also talk about what system she uses to tackle her 3,500 person database to convert more leads and build better connections. And Melinda shares a super easy way to use activities and personal interests that you enjoy to connect with other like-minded people in your community. And Melinda shares how she tracks her numbers and how she's built a system that helps her scale and hit her goals and how you can do the same. Plus, we talk about a ton of other ideas that you can use to grow your geographic farm. So be sure to check out this episode, like and subscribe, and enjoy the episode with Melinda. Welcome back to another episode of the Launcher Farm Show. I'm your host, Ryan Smith, and today we've got a great guest. It's Melinda Cruzy DePerna from Keller Williams in San Diego. So take a second, tell us a bit about yourself and why you're here. Ryan, it's so good to see you. Uh, well, I'm here because you invited, and uh, we've done a little bit of work together. You, you've actually spoken to my market center, getting ready to do that. And uh, I've got a passion for educating others and empowering others, so that's why I said yes. Awesome. Yeah, I'm excited to have you on. We've known each other online for, for a while. I've never met in person, but uh, it's awesome to always connect and, and share ideas and, and, like you said, share things that are important for agents and help them grow their business. So today, why don't we, before we jump into the, the, the topic, why don't you tell us a bit about your, your past, your, how you got into business and, and what you're up to? Well, I think like most real estate agents, I always find it actually always find it interesting when um, people planned on getting into real estate. Because most <laughs> Not, of many. <laughs> exactly. Not many. Not uh, many. I have had many careers, including, you know, Fortune 100 marketing uh, for a couple of firms. I've been a chemist. I've been wow. a stay at home mom. I've been a consultant. And I got into real estate. I got my license because I was already an investor. So I was already building my own investment portfolio at one point and uh, short-term rentals before they were a thing, before Airbnb was a thing. We actually advertised in magazines. So um, I was buying my retirement properties and renting them out. So I got good at that and people started asking me to do theirs. And I discovered a licensing requirement in California. We'd get snowbirds from up in Canada, come down. And when they stay for more than 29 days, legally, you're supposed to have a broker's license. So mm. me being me, I went and got a broker's license. Never, ever planned on selling real estate. And I remember saying to the partner that I would give referrals. And at the time I wasn't with Keller Williams, so I wasn't smart enough to realize I should be getting paid for those. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I said, I never, I would, you couldn't pay me enough money to sell. And <laughs> in 2013, I had dissolved that rental business okay. and I found myself in a position I needed to go out and go make six figures again. And uh, I still had an active broker's license. I almost let expire. And I decided it's, it's a license to print money. Uh, I also was a middle-aged woman. There's ageism in place. Despite me keeping up with skills, I had been out of the corporate work world for mm, at least 15 years. Okay. And I wasn't getting any jobs. Um, we were just coming out of that big, the big recession. I wasn't yep. even getting interviews. Wow. So I walked into Keller Williams begrudgingly <laughs> at, on the advice of a really good friend, though. At least she steered me to the right company. And all of a sudden I was surrounded with this amazing environment and I found a passion. That's awesome. And that's yeah, I, exactly what you said is uh, most people I find don't get into this business thinking they're going to get into it. It's something they stumble into. They fall into it. It's a, it's not, it's a, it's not a second choice, but it's usually a, a an evolution of what they're doing unless they've got family who's in the business and they kind of are following suit. Not very many people start young. And I, and the reason I ask that is that exact reason, because a lot of people have different skill sets. A lot of people have different pasts and, and histories that get them into the business. And those skill sets and those, those connections and things are kind of what dictate how agents do the business because they may have a degree in marketing. They may have worked in the corporate world. They may be a, a retired teacher and the skills and, and the things they do kind of flow into their business, which for you, you've obviously shifted gears a number of different times. So you've probably got a lot of different skill sets that you use. What did you do when you first got started to really capitalize on those skill sets and the, and the, the experience that you had? You know, Ryan, I think it took me a while for it to discover what actually those skill sets were going to be. You know, we talked chemist, a chemist, right? We yeah. talked technical marketing um, and then an MBA and then a mom. 
and then short-term rentals. So how does that all fit together? Yeah. And I was really good at tech. One of the reasons that people hired me to manage their properties was I was doing what the airline industry and the hotel industry had done for years. And I was doing, you know, occupancy balancing and, um, but there were no programs for it at the time and the right. business. And I had taught myself how to code. So I was doing websites before it was plug and play wow. and, and doing that, you know, as the, it started to shift to an online business. And yeah, so I thought, Hey, I'm going to get in and I'm going to be tech and I'm going to market. And I knew SEO and I knew about long tails and all of that kind of stuff. And I thought for sure, I'm going to sell based on my fabulous tech skills. None of it. I I don't think I've ever closed a deal. I don't even care about my website. It's kind of embarrassing. Yeah. I don't think I've ever closed a deal that came in through my website. Have I closed internet deals? Yes. That's different. That's advertising. That's not marketing. And so my tech skills actually were, I realized later that's not, it's my relationship skills. And it's that I'm a connector. So it's the business to business that while I was in the travel and tourism business, while I was in the chemical industry, while I was in the tech business, it's that ability to see connections other people don't see. Yep. And that became my differentiator. And then things like negotiation and education. Um, there was something you said at the beginning that people, um, uh, it's the second choice, right? Yep. About the real estate. And it's funny, I actually got hired by a client because people will say, well, the, the education is not important. I actually got hired by a client because they saw that this wasn't a fallback for me because I couldn't do anything else. Right. They saw my career path and said, oh, she's chosen this. Yep. Yep. And, and they were like, okay, so that means she's not just, um, you know, like we say, it's not just commission breath. She's chosen yep. this. Yeah, that's awesome. And, yeah. and that ties into exactly what I want to dive into today is, is the relationship side of things. Because in the geographic farm and in any business, the relationships is the ultimate goal and is really what it's all about. And like you said, the commission breath tends to be what drives over a lot of agents. And that's where you get that traditional geographic farming foundations where people usually just are trying to be very transactional. They're, they're sending up marketing about how awesome they are or how many homes they sell or I just listed, just sold. And the truth is it really comes down to the relationships. And that's something that I, I teach. And again, if anyone's ever watched my show, if you're watching it right now, you've probably heard me talk. I talk about the CPR, it's a, a phrase I've coined, and it's community positioning and relationships. And you have to have your community, the people you're focusing on, you put them first, then you position yourself as the ambassador and the expert. And then as a result of that, you build relationships. And any marketing, any strategy, any advertising should ultimately f- kind of flow through that funnel of helping the community, going towards community, positioning yourself, and then building those relationships. And for you, you really honed in on that relationship side of thing and, and ensuring you built those relationships. So I want to back, go backtrack and then say for you, how did you find out that the relationship is, is important to you? And what did you do to start the relationships? Because fi- I find a lot of agents, especially if they're newer, struggle with going from I'm, I'm a chemist, now I'm in real estate, transitioning the relationship to a, a professional one. And, and I definitely have had that transitional issues. And if I look back, I, t- I coach other agents now as well. And I look back and I blew it. I had this amazing database when I started and I Mm. think I had closed the vacation rental business about a year, year and a half um, before I started selling real estate, but I was very, very well respected in some of the local communities. I had helped found their tourism board. I'd served on boards of directors. I lived in the area uh, and I didn't quite go about it right. I stayed in contact with maybe my top 20. I'm still in contact with my top 20. Yeah. Yet there were all these other relationships. Had I really gone into the relationship side rather than mm. marketing side, I probably would have done even better. I mean, I, I did well, but I didn't see that. I was still, I actually built that business. A lot of it was networking based. Right. And I didn't, um, I, I went to, I went to a chamber of commerce sponsored event one time, and this is what may have been a, an epiphany for me. There was a gal speaking and she said, when you go to win networking, you need to budget two X the time for follow-up within 24 hours. Wow. And that's when I started to see a shift in my mindset. I still remember the day that I go, I went home, I wrote those note cards and I got a call from a guy that said, you're the only one that's ever done that. You're the kind of professional that I want to work with. And so that was probably the epiphany for me yeah. that said, okay, I'm good at the relationships, yep. I'm good at the connecting, 
and let's figure out how to drill down into this. And like you said, it's the intentionality behind it, which is the key part. And a lot of people think that they're a nice person or they're, they're friendly and get along with people and think that's going to be enough to, to generate that deals. And they're the ones that go out and try to network and don't generate the relationships. They may, people make, oh, he's a nice person or she's a nice person or I like them, but it's the intentionality behind it and the extra time you put into it that people don't see that the behind the scenes stuff that you've been focusing on. So when you started building those relationships, what were kind of, you said, you say, shared some of the stumbling blocks, but what was the things you learned to speed up the process and what are the things you kind of had to overcome? I think, so I've been at this since like 2013. So until 2020, there was a lot of the old school process. I've, I've yeah. been active on social media. I have those relationships and I wasn't being purposeful. Yeah. Um, I think that I probably felt like I was active because I talked to the same hundred people all the time, the yeah. easy people. And I was <laughs> in relationship with them, but that hundred people isn't enough to do, it wasn't enough to break my ceiling of transactions. I, I kept hitting the same, like within a few transactions every year. In 2019, I went down and then 2020 hit and things were really locked down here. I think you were the same way up there. Yeah, yep. So it actually gave me a gift because now I couldn't go network and meet new people. I couldn't hold open houses. I wasn't meeting anyone new now. So what I did is I had a database of 3,500 people outside of my normal database. And it was called Facebook. Yeah. And I could message anybody. And then I got intentional about the messaging on Facebook to make those relationships go deeper. And the other gifts that COVID gave us, um, and I don't know, I actually don't know your history for companies that you've been with, but yep. Keller Williams, when I started, was a little more cold calling and script oriented. <laughs> yeah. the, the script is... Who do you know that wants to buy, sell in real estate and, and invest yeah. in real estate? And it wasn't counted as a real estate contact. I've always known how many contacts I need to make unless I had that conversation. And that was always an uncomfortable conversation for me because that's not my natural style. And so I would avoid having those conversations <laughs> and not talk to enough people. If I needed yep. to talk to 15 people a day to meet my goals, or 20 people, I would talk to five because there were only five that I was comfortable in that conversation. And then I wouldn't count the other five. So COVID, we shifted, we pivoted, and it became care calls, yep. reach out to people. And it became suddenly, I leaned into that and I felt good about my business again. I felt good about my calls or my texts or my messages. I also was more comfortable texting than I was calling. Um, and I finally had permission to do so. Yeah. And I've never gone back to that other. I can ask those questions now because I'm in relationship with those people. But I feel that you don't have a right to ask for that until they know that you care and that you're in relationship. Yeah, 100%. And that was from my, my background when I got started. So I've been 14 years in the business and I moved and I started a new area and I was techie and I liked social media, but I like to hide behind the social media rather than go out and build relationships. I was trying to just network and, and connect with people. And I remember there's a guy who called me on it and I, to this day, I thank him for it. But in the moment I hated him for it, but he, he told me to get off my ass and go out and meet people. He said, get, stop hiding behind your computer and build relationships. And he said, you're, you're using social media as a crutch to hide behind. And he said, you're not building relationships. He said, you need to go build genuine relationships with people. And he challenged me. Now this is pre COVID obviously, but I was, I started being intentional with going out and having copies with people. And it completely changed the trajectory of my business because I started to focus on the relationship side of things and not just the contact, the number of contacts. It was just, it was the quality of contacts and not the, the quantity. Yeah. And, and like you said, Facebook allows you to do that in a way that's personable, it allows you to do it in a way that you can still build relationships and use those tools. And that's what I want to dive in today about and this is how you're using Facebook, because we, we, we're gifted with this thing called Facebook that we have the opportunity to build relationships that marketers would have dreamed about years ago to be able to connect with people on that personal level, fly under the radar, still build relationships and still be selling, but it starts with the relationship. So how are you using Facebook and, and how did that shift look like for you then? Well, actually our relationship is a great example of this. Yep. Okay. We've never met in person. We met through a common group 
of a common a common interest, common people. Yep. So we got that no like it. We got that trust part, not the no and like yep. it. We don't know each other because we yep. knew we knew we have a common interest. But there's a trust because other people. It's a very small group for those listening. Yep. Other people trust Ryan. So that endorsement is in that Facebook group, a private group, yep. and then. We sometimes talk business and we sometimes talk common interests. And yep. so then we start to see what each other does for business. Just because we're in that group doesn't mean we all refer back and forth <laughs> to each other. Exactly. Um, I think there's four, three or four agents in San Diego in that group. And you discovered that I'm active in my market center on the leadership council and asked, how do I get in to teach? I happen to be on the education committee and I, I ha- I'm a gatekeeper for that. Yep. Um, but what we looked at is how we may never, we may or may not ever do business together, but yet we can still um, impact each other's businesses positively. Yep. And I think that's part of the relationship that we have to look at is that we're looking for ways to support those people that are in our Facebook friends list yep. and not looking to take. Uh, so I think that that's one of the big things. That's a good, a really good example of it. And then you just gave me this opportunity to come on. I yep. think you don't know that last year, 75% of my business was agent to agent referral. So your listeners, I'm in San Diego, and then I have different specialties and niches. That's how you're supporting me. Whether we ever do a referral or not, doesn't yep. matter. We're not looking exactly. at each other transactionally. It's a yep. relationship. I check in with you in my system. From, you know, I try to do it once a quarter, but my system will have you pop up. It doesn't, it doesn't um, devalue the relationship yep. because it's in a system. And I think we have to get that out of our heads. It doesn't devalue it at all. And yep. I, that's the same thing if you're socially farming a geo area, if you're farming a niche, if you're farming a demographic, anything, yep. it's, it doesn't matter. It's a, re, it's a relationship you're trying to form. So if we started on Facebook, let's use an example. Let's say I like to paddle work. Okay. So during the pandemic, I realized I'm not meeting any new people in San Diego. Zero, none, zip. And that's when I bought my paddleboard because it was the one thing I could do by myself and not be exposed to anybody once they reopened our parking lots to the beaches. <laughs> and so I started looking, okay, well, I'm going to join paddleboarding groups. I didn't know how it would turn into business, but I said to the coach at the time, I said, well, at least, at least worst, worst case, I have a new paddle buddy. So that's the way I, pro- I approached it. Of yep. course, I live near the water. I live in a coastal area. So it is a geo farm too, yep. but it's an interest farm. And we started yep. that way. And I made some great new friends. And then eventually people know I'm in real estate because of the rest of my social media strategy. People, and then unless they're complete narcissists, they ask you about the market. <laughs> exactly. And if they know like it trust you, then they ask you about buying or selling. Yep. Or I've had quite a few. We've never done anything yet, but they asked me, um, do you have a great roofer? My roof's leaking. Do you have this person? Do you have that? And then you're always in those groups. You come from contribution. You don't say, Hey, I'm a real estate agent and I use Joe's roofing. You say, um, yeah, yeah, I've got a great roofer. His name's Joe and my clients have loved him. Yeah. It's more subtle than that. Yeah, exactly. And it's the personal, you, like you said earlier with a group, when you know, like, and trust that person, you pass that information on to someone else, there's an instant trust for them. So that creates more trust for when that referral gets passed to the, from the roofer to that client, they are happier about it because they know that if, if, if you like them, then they're going to be happy with them. And that furthers the trust, furthers the, the, the relationship, which is, right. is huge. And I think a big part of what you said too, is that personal interest is a big part of it. Because a lot of people think that when they're getting out there, they got to be networking just for real estate. And I find that so many agents are doing that and so many other agents are doing that and you're not really standing out and it's that no like and trust and you get to know someone by having common interests by having something in right. common that you enjoy having whether it's a personal interest whether it's a hobby whether it's geographic based whether it's a cause you care about and if you're willing to to get to know people on that level it will evolve into like you said people will ask about what you do people will think about you when they're thinking about doing a transaction but i find so many agents are hung up on has to be about real estate or that no one's, no, I, I just got to market myself. And the reality is it's the relationships. And again, it comes back to those relationships. And that's really what it's about. And when you connect with a group of people that you, that have a similar interest in you or something in common, you're going to build stronger and better relationships. And your business is going to be more fun. 
Yes, exactly. Let, let's be honest. This is a hard business. You get yeah. knocked around. There's a lot of moving parts. There's a lot of rejection. There's a lot of unpleasant behaviors, especially in the last couple of years. And I'm no longer a spring chicken. I hit this market, you know, I hit this business late and I'm, I, you know, I'll take it back to the tech. I am, um, if we look at a personality profile, I'm a driver profile. Okay. I'm actually, despite a degree in chemistry and a profession in that, I am not a detail-oriented person. Okay. Yet what I, and I was married to an engineer for 25 years. So I actually am extremely good with highly detailed people mm -hmm. and helping them to come to good decisions. Yet I've discovered that I don't always enjoy that as much. Right. So it comes to coming out with what your perfect client avatar is when you get yep. up to a place in the business of what's going to be pleasurable to me. So I want to work with people who value me and who have gratitude. And I also want to work with people who enjoy me and whom I enjoy. Yep. So if you get, it's not just the no and trust. I was always really good with the trust factor. Yep. The no, I was a little too private for a while. But it was the like that piece that was missing. And right. then I'm like, okay, I like them. They like me. And I used to try to want to be something slightly different than I am. And I had another person in my life who um, I asked her to coach me on video in 2016. And I wanted her, if you look, I kind of like cockeye my mouth and I talk <laughs> with my hands and I have these other interesting things. I was also much, much heavier, probably close to 100 pounds heavier than I am. And I wanted her to help me with these things on camera. And she said, I will coach you or you will pay me to coach you. <laughs> I won't do those things because you're an in-person business. Right. And if those clients don't like those things about you on camera, they're not going to like them in person either. You need yep. to be authentic. She knew yep. about authenticity long before it was a buzzword. And that's, I think, a key in farming too. Yep. Like if, if, uh, if I'm going to door knock, and it's going to be painful for me. They're going to see that and feel that. I call door knocking ding dong ditching. That's my hope. So don't answer the door. Don't answer the door. Except yeah. when I have a purpose. I'm really good at it when I have a purpose. Like I'm sitting there with um, bags for a food drive to do. And I'm totally comfortable knocking on your door because it's for a charity. And I'm totally um, comfortable knocking on your door if it's for an open house. Yeah. It's just knocking on the door to like just knock on the door. I'm not okay with. So that's kind of like the common theme. I'm happy to get to know you as your neighbor, but and we're all different that way. And that's why I teach, when I teach farming, I, I, I teach having various strategies that you're going to like and enjoy. And one of the things I talk about all the time is it's not just a, when you're creating a budget, it's not just a financial budget, it's a time budget, but also an energy budget. And you have to do things that you're going to actually be able to stick with and, and keep up with. When So people ask me like, what's the best way to farm? And I say, well, what's the best way to farm for you? Because what you're going to enjoy, what you're going to like, what you're going to want to do in your farm is very different than what I'm going to want to do and enjoy. Maybe similar, maybe some crossover, but it's you have to do stuff that is important to you, that's impactful for you, things that you're going to enjoy. Because if you're going to commit to, to working in this area for a long time and, and be in this business for a long time, you got to find things that you enjoy that you're, and then also, like you said, you're going to be able to connect with people who connect with you. And if you just do that boring old transactional based marketing, you get bored of it, you get tired of it. Or if you're doing the just straight cold calls, just straight, and that does work. But for a lot of, or I'd say for most agents, that can be very daunting. It can be very, soul crushing for a lot of people to do that thing that they hate doing. So you have to find that, that thing that you like. And I think getting involved in your community in, in building relationships in different ways is important, but like you mentioned though, you have to have a system behind it. And you mentioned having a system for your follow-up because again, a lot of agents are scatterbrained. They're, they're very ADHD and they're all over the place. Can you tell us, talk about your system? Because I think that's important for agents to know that, like you said, it, it's okay to have a system and it still makes it personal but you have to systemize it. So can you explain what yeah. that looks like for you and why that's important? Yeah. So, so what, um, if, and if you haven't talked about it, it's, um, called Gary Keller calls it going from E to P entrepreneurial to purposeful and that we all have a ceiling on based on our unique skills and talent. And mine was pretty good. My ceiling, my, my ceiling from entrepreneurial is pretty good. So it's enough. And so I kept hitting that ceiling, hitting that ceiling because I wasn't being purposeful. Yeah. And then I mentioned 2019 wasn't good. And then 2020 came in roaring and, and I found myself, um, a lot of people would be happy to do what I was doing for business, but I found myself without a pipeline and without business when we mm. shut down in March. 
And so I had to get purposeful. Necessity is the mother of all inventions. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I didn't do anything brilliant. I took, because I'm with KW, I was familiar with their do the database two system, which yep. is they've divided the alphabet for us. Why well, reinvent the wheel into two letters of the alphabet to help balance. It's just to help balance the number of contacts you're making in a week. My database, Facebook was 3,500. It's pretty big. That's a little daunting. So I learned some things there. But so I took that. I take my handy dandy notebook. I write down my letters because there's no, there's, there's no easy way. It's, it's uh, mundane and boring to do it in Facebook. Uh, but I took that and I went into Facebook Messenger and I batched. So I start, say, on Monday. Today, I, I might have to change my batching because Mondays are really busy in real estate transactions right now. But I would take Monday and I'd take my time and I'd go out and I'd send out. I started probably sending 40 messages yep. and copy paste. Um, learning how also how not to get distracted with the conversations that pop up, <laughs> yeah, but yeah. I have a whole system that I send out those messages. I get these amazing responses within 24 hours. I get even more responses within three. Then I budget the time to go back and respond. Every mm -hmm. message starts with a, you know, Hey Ryan, uh, how'd your first quarter go? Do you have any big plans coming up for summer? Cause now we're already into May, right? It would yeah. have been have any plans for spring always has a question because I want interaction always, yep. unless it's a birthday, I'll say happy birthday. I wait till they respond. And then I write a question. Yep. So, and I'm looking and now there's a, there's a cadence and there's a method to the conversations. And I am looking not just for a superficial conversation. I'm learning to bring our relationship one step forward, yep. to learn more about either you, your Ford things, your family, yep. your occupation, that your recreation and your dreams. And I'm looking for that. And Facebook makes it really simple in that because Messenger, I have history. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So the next time I talk to you, I can look back and say, how's that? I broke my ankle in September. How's that broken ankle healing? Yeah. Or I've forgotten like your dog had babies or, or that you had a baby, right? Yeah. But it, it's, it works as a de facto lazy woman's database. <laughs> CRM. Uh, so it's beautiful like that. Now, there's two. So that broke through doing that at a, a special, I knew to hit the level of business that I wanted in 2020. I know my conversions well enough. I knew I needed to have 20 conversations or I'm sorry, 15 conversations a day yep. to do that. And I started that in about uh, mid-May and I had an accountability person for that to make sure I did them. And my business six weeks later started to blow up. Awesome. And I mean, in a great, in a great way. And it's not, What's fascinating is it's not necessarily from the person that I had the conversation with, but that person and that activity starts to change algorithms. It starts to yep. change. You're now top of mind. You're now in emotional proximity with them. Yep. And then the business just started to roll in. You get, you go out, you make your own luck. You get in the path of the business. And so those relationships start to flourish. And what I did learn though, is that I needed to cut that down. So if you had responded to me in a non-pleasant way, I might delete you. I've yep, got, I, right. I deleted over a thousand people because <laughs> my goal is to be in relationship with you. So I've had other and local agents. I have some in there. There's a couple of top agents will be like, well, why did you reach out to me? And I just come in honest. I said, I've decided if we're going to be Facebook friends, we're going to be in relationship. Yep. That's huge. Yeah. And, just be, and, be transparent. And you said it's, it's purposeful and it, if they want to be on board and they want to do build a relationship with you, then they'll be on board. And if they don't, then it's a good way to, to eliminate. So that's a good way to clean up your list, be intentional with it and do it at the same time. And I think there's a couple of key things that I think that stood out for me was like you said, is we have to get used to being bored doing that. It is, it is mundane. I remember Gary Keller said years ago that we have to get, the sooner we get comfortable with being the highest paid bored people, the sooner we're going to enjoy this business. And we have to I get, I hadn't heard that one. I, it was at family reunion. And I loved it. And it's just like, that's always stuck. It's like, okay, you gotta be. And then it's also being purposeful with it and it's consistency. And that's, again, this is, I've done 80 plus episodes on the show and I always ask for advice. And, and one of the most, the, or not one of the most common advice is consistency is, is crucial. And whether you're doing five deals, 50 deals, 500 deals, the consistency is so important. And you've created a system around that. You've created that consistency. You've created that, repeatable process and then you've tweaked it i'm sure so i want to ask about the growth part of that what, that you've learned from obviously that was a couple of years ago when you started doing that what things have you learned to tweak what things have you gotten rid of or changed over the, the years of doing that 
think one of the interesting things is, okay, so I went, I broke that ceiling. 2020 was like, like most other years, pretty like on the top of it. I did a year's worth of business in four months in 2020. Um, it was fascinating. And then in 2021, I wanted to break that ceiling. So I had to increase the number of contacts. It's a simple mathematical thing. So I increased to, and I had to do it gradually to 25. And that got me almost where I wanted to be. It's just a little bit shy, but <laughs> breakthrough gangbusters, amazing year, you know, top of everything awards out the yin yang and good financial re- rewards too. And emotional rewards too. Yep. Um, and now for 2022, I want to grow my business another 50%. Well, you, if I just do the same things, I'm not going to get the results. Plus the market is continually moving and shifting and the needs and those relationships are slightly different. Yep. So, um, It's adapting to that. And my biggest challenge right now is scalability. Yep. So 15 conversations a day, I can do my sleep now. 25, a little bit of effort. 40, which is what I need. 200 a week. 40 is exhausting. 40 (laughs) is time consuming. 40 is not delegatable and it is not scalable. So now it's figuring, okay, how do I scale and leverage? And that means moving people from Facebook into my CRM and coming up with other ways. I have never done a newsletter ever in all my years. It's too daunting, which is (laughs) person, right? Tech and marketing. I have an MBA in marketing. Give give me a break. This is ridiculous. But I know that to do it, I need to be consistent. And I know that I haven't had the ability to do that. So now I need to find systems and people. And I don't mean hiring. I mean like VAs and things to leverage and move that. So I need to move them from Facebook, the ones that are, are appropriate to move yep. and then move them into my CRM. So Facebook is almost like my feeder fishing pond. Exactly. And now I need to start to do that because I can't sustain. And let's say I hit my goals and I want to do more next year. I can't do 50 conversations, a day, meaningful conversations a day. Right. And I can't keep track of that. Um, so it's, it's the challenge of scalability. That and that is a struggle for a lot of agents, and that's where figuring out how to do things that are meaningful, impactful, personal, but like you said, scalable. And that's one of the things I talk about all the time is doing one to many marketing that still feels mm-hmm. appropriate. And a lot of people shift and they they lose that personal touch. They go from the personal connection, then they shift right over to, well, I've got too many people in the database, so I got to just mass mail stuff, and then they lose that connection. So you have to, it, it is a delicate balance. And there's, I think, I'm sure you'll you'll find as you go through, you're going to lose a few people, you're going to gain a few people, it's going to be uh, sometimes daunting, sometimes, I'm sure, nervous and scary, where you're like, oh, crap, I'm shifting from the, the direct messaging to to adding more people in it. But in the long run, it will be more purposeful and 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 higher impact if you can do that that direct messaging is not going to go away that do the database too um i can't say that i actually hit people every quarter yet if you use that system you'll hit them at least three times a year or two times a year and have a personal conversation and i will pick up the phone for the appropriate people and i will meet in person for the appropriate people so i can't lose that that's what's worked and i have to remind myself so that was the other blessing of covid was focus for me yep Focus on my money, focus on my time, focus on my energy. I know what works. Yep. I could stop everything else except my transactional. And if I did 40 messages a day, I'll hit my numbers. I yep. haven't hit my numbers because I haven't done the 40 because <laughs> I've gotten tied up with other things. I have yep. to be really careful and intentional not to get distracted from what works and then keep an eye to make sure it's still working. And I think we'll have to tweet the other thing which you mentioned earlier too was the having your ideal avatar and finding the people that you want to work with and then putting your attention first attention to those people first the people that you know are great referral partners people that are easy to connect with that that want to build relationships with you and then kind of building your system around kind of a like we talk about in Kellerman's all the time, the, the contact sphere, the circle with your your inner core is your most important. You can then automate some of that stuff, which may not be as personal to the people that are the other 3,500 people, you have 3,000 of them in the outer ring and you got 500 in your inner ring. And that takes, again, some tweaking to, to figure out who's who's going to be in that circle. And it takes going through it and then figuring out 
so you may have thought someone was a great referral partner and they're <laughs> not even in your and, database and anymore. Relationships change too. Exa- yeah, exactly. So, so if, if we can, I actually want to address that. I know you're a geo farming guy and I, and I, um, you know, I admire that and I hope that I'll get in a place at some point again, that geo farming can be my, one of my pillars. Uh, I shared before the program that I was geo farming somewhere, you guys, and then I moved out and I lost my validity in the community. I'd only been doing it about a year and a half. So I didn't have the established validity. So it's gone. It's, I have some of the contacts, but it's, it's gone as a mass, as a uh, one to many type market. Yep. Yep. But what I do have is I've gotten more clarity as I look to grow the business on what are my niches Yep. And what are my successful lead generation pillars? So, and I now look at them a little separately. So my most successful business conversion pillars or lead generation pillars, my number one is agent to agent referrals. I'm really good at, at giving the agents the confidence that I'm going to take good care of their clients, reflect well on them, and they're going to get paid. And boy, do people love California referral commissions in some parts of the country it's bigger <laughs> yeah. than what they get. Yeah, okay, yeah. Our little 25% referral piece is bigger than most people's paychecks probably yeah. not where you are but yeah. other parts of the country and you guys have all heard the california mass migration which goes into another i'll tell you about a niche and why that's important but so it's agent to agent referrals it's past clients and then it's my past my past clients i'm starting to think of them more as my sphere once they're out of the year no longer just past clients they're my sphere so it's my sphere my vendors people like that their referrals i was 100 percent referral based last year however i said i want to grow up and I want to grow 50%. So that's going to take some different activities. So I really hungered down on that ideal net avatar and my niches and also seeing a shift. Not, I don't want to call it a shift, but a change coming in the market that I need to be, when we are so inventory constrained, I need to be working with people who need to buy yep. and sell, yep. not just it's a want or it would be nice. So I started to look at what I was already good at, what I have, what I marketed before. And my first thing, of course, it's, I told you this before we started, I live in San Diego, um, 10% of the United States active duty military population lives in San Diego. Wow. I didn't know that. I didn't know that till last week. Wow. 10%. I knew we were the largest naval installation. Uh, that's active duty, never mind veterans. Yeah. So I really, really doubled down into my military purposefulness. But if we take my first pillar of lead generation, right, it's agent to agent. So who am I farming at which basis? It's the basis that I know have movement yeah. in and out that I'm going to refer out or I'm going to refer in. So I have really good relationships there. Yeah. That's that's the first thing. And I'm farming now. It's yep. just not, ge- it's not a true geo farm, but it's, I'm farming them. Then the, and then I'm looking at, okay, my weakness was local people. Like how do I get those military referrals locally in that military business? So that's where some of the social media can come in. And how do I make sure I need to, I'm getting better at getting more referrals in that first year. Like I mentioned that first year class past client yep. and the transaction is actually like the golden time for referrals and what not getting my full share. So it's also digging down into your business and understanding it. So then you can make that strategy. Um, And the next thing I realized was um, I'm already doing, you've all heard the mass migration of California. All everyone's leaving California. (laughs) Why do I only have two weeks of inventory, right? Everyone's leaving California, but you know, who is leaving California that's selling their homes that are high value and highly motivated it's seniors. Mm. So it's people like myself that are now empty nests, but they're healthy or whatever. They want to go a cheaper quality of life and they don't want to work as hard. Their money yep. goes further in Tennessee or in Arizona. Um, they're not. At, and, and so I've decided that was a niche previously and I hadn't explored it much lately because my business was just coming in, not purposefully, just organically. <laughs> yeah. So now I've gotten purposeful about that. And I'm working, I may be coming to you on that geo farm of, you know, will farming a over 55 community be something that I work on? So will I be looking for the seniors who are moving locally to an over, so we have a sell and then we have a buy? Or will I be looking for the people I'm developing the relationships among the continuous care facilities and doing that? And those all start online. Yeah. That actually shifts over to LinkedIn yep. more than Facebook. And that's actually more like a corporate business that I'm very comfortable in. Yeah. So, and then my other one is coastal luxury, which is a whole different animal. And the good thing you've got, you know, 
the different pillars and you know that there's different strategies and approaches for each one of those on how to generate referrals, how to generate the leads. And for a lot of agents, I find they struggle with kind of paring it down and creating different different content, different relationships, and they try a one size fits all approach. And that's when they fall flat where what worked here doesn't mean it's going to work here. What doesn't mean it's going to work over here. You have to be intentional with it. And you said purposeful to go from just trying something to being more purposeful, what you're doing and why you're doing it. And sometimes you're juggling a lot of balls to do that, but when you get it and you crack the code for each one of those pillars, it can really start to pay off, which is, which is huge. So in the interest of time, I want to ask you one last question before we wrap up is in the future, you mentioned where you're going with that. Where do you see your business shifting as far as those uh, moving from Facebook? You said you talked about a, a newsletter. How do you see yourself leveraging it and, and still maintaining the, the, the personal connection? It's interesting. So it does, some of it does involve money and some of it's listening to, to our leaders about how to be successful. And one of the first things they say is know what you're good at, where are you yeah. getting your business and now expend your time, money, effort, and people more on that. Yeah. So with it being relationship, I used to follow a system. Um, the book was on my desk, actually. It's not, I'll grab it. Uh, and it was called perk your sphere and it was an event and, um, giveaway type thing. And I loved it. And however, without a full-time admin, it became burdensome and yeah. I am not a social butterfly. So Andrew, you talked about this and like, I know your farming strategies, like I am not the go to the park person and have <laughs> a big event in the family movie night. Yeah. It's really hard for me. I'm great at just showing up yeah. <laughs> doing that. I'm, I'm not an event. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I'll just, I like to show up, write the check kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. So I got, I realized like, I felt like a failure because I let that go. But then I realized, I, I know it's as dumb as gift giving client giant has a system and I just write the check and they send the gifts. Yes. And I've just, I've leaned into that because I realized I was leaving relationships and money on the table because I don't show people how much I appreciate that. So yeah. it's that appreciation marketing. I leaned in and I need to systematize it into AM cards, which is sending the birthday cards, the home anniversary cards, the just because cards, which is really easy if you stock their Facebook. Um, so it's, it's really that kind of, that kind of leverage um, awesome. where I see it going. And again, it's that word is that purposeful and you're being more purposeful with that and not just hoping something happens. You're, you're shifting and seeing where the gaps are, where, that's the big part for a lot of agents. They don't look at the gaps in their business and it's going, okay, I got here. What do I need to do? How do I fill in that gap? Okay. How do I fill in that gap? And then, and then grow it. So that ties into our, one of our last segments we always ask is what's one last piece of advice you'd have for agents who are thinking about creating more relationship based marketing and an approach in their business and their farm. Mm, more relationship based marketing. I, it, you know, I'm going to say the same thing you said from everybody else. It's consistency, get purposeful and do it. And then get accountable because you will um, fall off. I, I took on a new role as coaching. My numbers are going to stink in six weeks. <laughs> they, they are going to stink. Because yeah. I, I track my contacts and they're not there. I'm not, yeah. I'm falling behind on tracking. And so you've got to be purposeful. You have to make friends with the board on. Yeah. Yeah. That, that part, it just is. It's a system. It's great advice, but it's not advice people want to hear because they want something magical. And it's, it, it is that it's just be consistent with it and, and mm -hmm. do it. And There's no magic button. That's awesome. There, there so isn't. we always wrap up with a best book. So what's one book you'd recommend that's had an impact in your life or you think would have an impact in our viewers' lives? I wonder if it's over here in the corner. Um, it is. I can see it. Hang on. All right. <laughs> uh, there's a lot, but um, this one right here. The four agreements. Ah, yes. Yep. Okay. Uh, I always go back and I still haven't mastered this, but there's two that have really been resonating lately. And one of them, of course, is do not take anything personally. All this stuff, you just let it go. It's whatever's going on with them. Mm. And the other one is don't make assumptions. You've got to ask questions. The person who asks the best questions, this is for everything, your relationships, this a market that's changing. I have two escrows that the buyer's agents haven't asked the right questions. And guess what? Their buyers are paying more money than they need yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. because yeah. they didn't ask the right questions. Yeah. So yeah. ask questions, come from authenticity, listen to the questions. 
It's awesome. I should reread that book. It's been probably a decade since I've read it and I need a good refresher would be, would be nice. Yeah. So. I've got a dog eared and I'm using it. I use it a lot. I use it personally. I use it with my I coach, my sister through this, this weekend, my coaching clients, all of it, because they like, if you go down to it and yeah. it's small, it's easy. It's simple. I got a lot of great books, but this one really. So how can our viewers check out what you're up to connect with you and find out more about what you're doing? Friend me on Facebook. It's Melinda K. DePerna. Instagram, same handle. Just Google me, Melinda Cruzy DePerna, San Diego Real Estate Solutions. Connect with me on social media and let's get started. Awesome. We'll put that in the show notes so our viewers can check that out and connect with you. And we'll put the book in there as well so they can check it out. So Melinda, I really appreciate being on the show. I appreciate you sharing your authenticity. I really appreciate you sharing your, your resources and, and what you've done and how you've done it. And, and your, I know you'll be an inspiration to our viewers. And if they take your advice and, and, and follow what you're doing, I know that they can see a real increase in their business. Well, Ryan, I appreciate the opportunity. Thanks awesome. for taking the time with me. All right. Thank you. Thanks for checking out today's episode. If you'd like more videos like this, be sure to sub like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Check out our Facebook page and our other social media channels. Looking forward to bringing you more great content like this and happy farming. <laughs>